All right, welcome back to Ubad's lab. And today I have a fun problem for you guys. We're gonna be looking at a loop-de-loop -loop and looking at the minimum height an object has to be dropped from a ramp in order to complete a loop-de-loop. -loop. All right, let's get right into the problem here. So I start off by uh, drawing a little diagram. So we can see that this is the loop-de-loop. -loop. The object starts over here at a certain height and it travels downward and falls down and it will go up the loop loop and down. So the question is asking, uh, what is this minimum height so that the object can complete the loop de loop? Because if it doesn't generate enough speed, then it'll go up and then just drop down. It won't, it won't complete the loop de loop. So we want to figure out this minimum height. Um, and we're also given more information that there's no friction, uh, there's no air drag, so there's no dissipative forces. So this is going to be very useful because we can work through this problem in terms of conservation of mechanical energy and they'll make this a lot easier. Um, so uh, we're going to have to look at two different points of our um, diagram. Uh, I'd say the first point obviously has to be the starting point right here. Let's call this point A. Right, and now what's the other crucial point that we need to look at? Um, I would say that the other crucial point that we should look at is right here, point B. And the reason for that is that this is this is like the moment of truth. We don't know if it could fall down here or if it has enough speed at this moment to overcome and complete the loop-de-loop. -loop. So these are our two important points. And what's the question? The question is, will it have enough speed at this point? So let's solve in terms of variables uh, what the minimum speed at this point needs to be. And then we can start using our conservation mechanical energy. So let's figure out the minimum speed at point B. So uh, the easiest way to look at this would be, let's draw a, a free body diagram first to understand what's going on at this point. So this is going to be a free body diagram for point uh, C. I mean point B. Okay, this is point B. And what forces do we have acting on this point? We obviously have gravity going down. F grav. And do we have a normal force acting on it from this surface? Uh, acting down, pushing it down. And so the question is asking the minimum speed. So if the speed was above this minimum, yeah, if it was going fast enough, the, the uh, force of this ramp would be pushing back up against it. Because if you think about it, like, think about an object moving around, around a ring. The faster and faster it goes, the more force that it's going to be applying to the outside of it. So therefore, the more force that the ring will be applying to the ball to keep it in that circular motion. So we're just looking at the minimum. So we're not going to be taking, there will be no normal force acting on it. So uh, one way to think about it would be, let's look at this loop, let's look at this loop -de loop right here. Let's say loop -de -loop, loop -de loop was like this. And then there's a hole right there. And then it comes back. Okay. So that's basically what we're looking at. Uh, our object should be able to come here, go through, and, and then finish the loop-de-loop because -loop, we're looking at the minimum so that no normal force needs to act on it to keep it in the circular motion. So the only force will be FG, no normal force. It's a little hard to understand, but once you understand that, uh, it's a, a really good start to this problem. So we have this FG. So let's sum the forces. F is equal to MA. And these are both in, this is in circular motion, and these are both in the radial direction, so we can put uh, sum of the forces R of MA R. So what's our only f uh, force in this radial direction? It's FG. And we know FG is uh, the mass 
times the acceleration of gravity, which is uh, g. We're going to do everything in terms of variables because I like my variables. Um, let's go mg, which is going to be the force of gravity. That's all we have. It's equal to m times v squared over r. Uh, v squared over r is the acceleration, uh, centripetal acceleration. So we solve for that. And now we can solve for this velocity. This is going to be v min. Let me just put a little min right there. v min. So what can we do to uh, solve for that v? We can cancel out some m's right there. Uh, we can throw this r onto the other side, multiply by r, and then take the square root. So this v min will equal the square root of r times g. Okay, so we need this speed at that point to complete the loop-de-loop. -loop. So let's, uh, let's look at something that will compare the speeds and uh, compare the heights. And what we can do is set the poten potential energy versus kinetic energy at this point equal to the potential energy versus uh, plus the kinetic energy at this point. So u, the potential energy, at point A plus k, the, potential, the kinetic energy at point A, is equal to u, b plus k, b. So what is our potential energy at point A? So first we need to establish a, an uh, h of zero, an h, an h of zero line. And I think a good h of zero would be uh, right here at the bottom. This is where h will equal to zero. All right. So, what will be the potential energy? It's just going to be mg times the uh, displacement, which is h. The potential energy uh, due to gravity is always mg h times the height, and our height is just going to be h for that, plus the kinetic energy. And this is starting from rest, so we don't have any kinetic energy at this point. We can cross that out. And let's go into the potential energy of uh, this. So the potential er energy of that would be mg times the height, which would be 2r, because we have r would be this, and let's add another r, it'd be that. So 2r. Let's throw the 2 over here and the r over there. All right. Plus the kinetic energy at point B. What would the kinetic energy be? We know that it will be one half mv squared. Kinetic energy is one half mv squared. That's what we need to know. All right. Now we can uh, start simplifying this. Let's cancel out some m's. There's an m on everything. Cancel that out. Uh, what else could we do? Um, uh, we need to solve for this h, right? Uh, how about... So first, actually, let's um, let's write, we write this. We have g times h is equal to 2gr plus 1 half m. And we found the velocity at that point will be equal to that. So let's throw this v min into this v. equal to the square root of rg and that's squared that's perfect because that'll cancel out perfectly and so let's simplify again we have g h is equal to 2 g r plus 1 half m and then uh, taking um, squaring a square root we just get rg and that's perfect because now I see G's on everything. Let's cancel all the G's out. And now what do we have? We have Oh, I found a mistake right here. 
I canceled that M out and I brought it down anyway. That is a mistake. There's no M over there because we canceled it out in this step. So I carried it down for no reason. Let me, so it's one half times that and then one half times that. So we cancel all the G's out. We get H is equal to two R plus one half R. So we can just simplify this into H is equal to five over two R. And this is true for all loopy loops that don't experience friction. Uh, the height that it needs to be released from uh, in a ramp needs to be five over two R compared to the radius. So yeah, I think this is a really interesting problem to go through. Uh, it really helps um, to uh, work through your understanding of mechanical, the conservation of mechanical energy.